October 9, 2023, and the clerk will call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent. Here. Gibson. Excused. Austin. Here. Misho. Here. Witham. Here. Gerding. Here. Cameron. Here. Messier. Here. Chair recognizes Councillor Vincent, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councillor Gibson is now present. Brings us to agenda item number three, and just for the record, putting a fireball in your mouth before a city council meeting is pro probably was a very bad idea on my part, but we'll make it. <laughs> Brings us to agenda item number three, which is rec uh, recognition of indigenous people. This meeting is taking place on Nadinaka, which is the unceded traditional homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge with honor, with gratitude, the land, waterways, living being, and the Abenaki, the people who have stewarded Nadikana throughout the generations. Brings us to agenda item number four, which is public hearings. We have no public hearings scheduled for this evening. Brings us to agenda item number five, which is comments by visitors. The Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at the City Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. The Speaker shall not enter into any debate with any person, the Mayor, Council members, City Manager, or Department Heads. At this time, we welcome comments by visitors. Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Laura Berry, Ward 4, 211 Green Street. So the last time I spoke up here, as the zoning board can say, I messed it up a little bit, so I wrote something down this time. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I'm very happy with how the zoning board appeal went last week. I really appreciated the educated discussion on the appeal and project. I know it is not an easy decision, but I feel the correct one was reached. With that said, I feel that there are no winners particularly in this situation. I am very hopeful that the developer comes back with a newer design that compromises both sides of the argument. I would like to see this project succeed, but it needs to be done well so our city can be proud of the outcome, not just settle with one. I'm very much happy and hope that this can happen. On another note, I wanted to take a minute and say I appreciate all our board members for serving the city. It is not an easy job and these members do it because they believe in Summersworth. This tends to be a very thankless job as it opens people up and boards up to criticism, which tends to be the feedback that most of our members hear. I know that none of the boards get to their decisions easily, and I wanted to say that I truly appreciate all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Good evening and welcome. Hi, Brad Fredette, Three Blackwater Road, Summersworth. I wanted to offer further comment on the issue of the National Guard site on Blackwater Road. It's my understanding that that's up for discussion to be conferred to a realtor for sale. And I just wanted to, I guess, re-ask of the council some of the questions I asked the last time and maybe get some further clarification. It's my understanding that the property is currently zoned as a recreational facility and it's currently owned by the city of Summersworth. Without too much leap, I think I can say the city is looking to sell a city-owned recreational property. I'm not quite sure why they're in such a rush or apparent rush to do so. Uh, apparently, it was at past meetings have shown that there's a member of the council that for whatever reason, educated as he may or may not be on the process, was willing to fast forward the original sale that was suspended the last time without allowing visitors to comment. Um, I know the mayor is resigning or is not coming back for re-election. The council is going to be changing. Why, again, are we in such a rush to sell city-owned property that could have a use even an intrinsic use to this city. If it's not recreational in its current form, it could be recreational in another form or pr 
provide betterment to the residents beyond the fast sale of the space. I know the argument of the housing crisis always comes up, but do we really believe five, eight, and this is an open question, five, eight, ten, or even a hundred units is going to fix the housing crisis as it is defined? I hope that's all given thought. I appreciate your time. And the last question I guess I would ask is, if it is going to be listed through a realtor, will that, in the interest of producing the most tax dollars for the city, be done so in a way that the city puts conditions on the sale that are beneficial to the residents of the area and respectful of the zoning in place in that area? And if, in an effort to produce the most tax dollars, will that let's say the property is worth $250,000. Will an RFP go out for request to get the most competitive bid for the real estate services to sell the property, or how will that be handled? Thank you. Thank you. Further comments by visitors this evening? Any further comments by visitors? Any further comments by visitors? None being so, brings us to agenda item number six, which is the... Con yes. It is. <laughs> Brings us to agenda item number six, which is the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion on the consent calendar. Councillor Pepin moves that the consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councillor Austin. The question before the council is on the consent calendar. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the consent calendar <coughs> is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number seven, which is comments by city councillors. Any comments by city councillors this evening? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. So I sit on the uh, ZBA this past week. Uh, we had a, a meeting uh, some of you, most of you are familiar with. I sit on the uh, ZBA as a, um, a citizen's member, a member as a citizen, not as a city councilor, and I was appointed by the mayor. And I just want to say that this week's meeting was probably one of the toughest meetings that I've ever had to endower, you know. Um, uh, being on the ZBA for a couple of years now. Um, <clears throat> it was a unanimous vote to uphold the HDC's decision to not uh, let the uh, Elm Street apartments uh, go without some type of improvements more towards a historic type of theme. <clears throat> and uh, I, I just think that, uh, you know, first of all, my, my thought process was to try to follow what our own ordinances are and regulations in the ZBA ordinance. Uh, and I found it very difficult. Um, I know I've said this before that we need to have some type of modification, uh, rezoning. Uh, I even sat down after this meeting and thought for days about maybe we could go and pick and put a plaque on the oldest buildings that are historic and the ones that are right next door to it not to in the zone because it may have been remodeled or brand new and it doesn't quite fit the HDC's character, but something. Um, then I heard, you know, there might be something coming up. Uh, we might rezone, whatever it may be. I just think that it makes it very hard as a member uh, in the HDC to, to uphold some of these things. Um, so I really want the council to think maybe we should do something about these ordinances um, for, you know, zoning of that uh, if, or the, the whole historic district. Um, it would make it a lot easier. Uh, it wouldn't be so, uh, I don't know, it just wouldn't be so difficult. Um, you know, the sad thing about it is there was no winners or losers in this past decision. You know, I know the city probably wanted to see that that uh, building put up because it wants to revitalize uh, downtown, and I am all for it. But I was put on that board as a citizen, not as a counselor, so I made that decision as a, as a citizen. And I just want to justify my actions, but more, I just wanted to um, kind of see if we can get down to addressing some of those uh, concerns. Thank you. Further comments by councillors. Councillor Witham. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vincent's comments are timely. Um, 
and I wanted to share, in the interest of transparency, uh, some uh, wheels that I have uh, in motion here uh, with city staff. Uh, I did reach out to the city manager, and I've asked him to uh, work on legislation, which I hope to introduce by the next meeting, to uh, basically redefine uh, the historic district here in the city of Summersworth. Um, uh, as I described it to him, I would envision a line along High Street from the Berwick Bridge uh, to West High Street and everything, uh, I'll go north, northwest of that, basically the hill section to remain in the historic district and everything outside of that to be out of the historic district and to possibly uh, redefine the historic mill district as well, though uh, I, I need to see some uh, mapping of that to, to, to offer further clarity. And why do I offer this up? Uh, certainly in response to the uh, long and arduous process of uh, 85 Elm Street, which uh, remains uh, at a stalemate, if you will. Uh, I would agree with Councilor Vincent that the Zoning Board of Adjustments uh, conversation and discussion was above board. Uh, they had uh, a rational basis for their decision. Whether I agree with it or not, uh, they at least went through a, a thorough process and agree it was perhaps one of the more difficult cases uh, for the ZBA. Uh, I know that the Historic District Commission uh, wrangled long and hard. Uh, Councilor Girding, you sit on that, working with the developer. Um, and what strikes me is the difficulty in coming to some understanding as to what could be allowed and not be allowed, and it is very subjective in nature. Whether or not to allow brick or to allow clapboards or some combination thereof is very subjective in my uh, opinion. Um, there were comments made at the meeting last week uh, about uh, the fact that our zoning ordinance is perhaps flawed. Well, if it is in fact flawed, perhaps this is an opportunity to at least engage the public in a dialogue around the zoning ordinance, a rather large piece of that. Uh, there have been other councilors that have commented about the historic district. Is it too big? Should it be redefined? Should we change it in some way? There have been some conversations, quite frankly, about doing away with it altogether and make it more of a guidance district. Uh, uh, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I think the legislation that I will bring forward will at least engage the community in a conversation around the historic district, right? Uh, at the end of the day, will I support an ordinance that I introduce? I don't know. Uh, what I want to hear is the community feedback. I want to generate a conversation. And I find it difficult to do that without an ordinance in front of us. Uh, I think it's important to have that uh, dialogue with the community. I've chatted with a number of community uh, folks about this. Uh, some have said, oh, geez, Dave, that's a kind of a bold thing. It might get some people angry. Uh, yes, it might, right? Uh, uh, productive legislation doesn't come easy, right? Um, the, the, the more difficult things that we do here uh, lend themselves to those difficult conversations. We need to have them, right? In the, uh, the case of 85 Elm Street, uh, opens the door for that conversation. So in the interest of transparency, and I know that there are some HDC members here this evening, uh, interestingly enough, uh, I look forward to that legislation being introduced, again, hopefully by the next meeting. Uh, it is a change to an ordinance, so it requires two readings and a public hearing, so there is a procedure for that to take place. Thank you. Further comments by councillors? Any further comments by councillors? Councillor Messier. I was going to wait to the end of the meeting, but in, in regards to 85 Elm Street, I was not happy of the outcome of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. I don't know how or when that section of town got historical perspective. Just because some buildings are old or houses does not make it historical. I think the optics of what's going on at 85 Elm Street is going to deter other developers and d other developers for coming to this community because it's nothing but a big pain in the ass. That's my belief and that's the way it is. You want to keep, I support that legislation when that comes, keep the historic district up on the hill with those houses, but you 
a brick facade on 85 Elm Street is not going to make it look old. All it is is a facade. The brick buildings there are, um, it's the Chandler School and the former Greek church. Tell me why we're so adamant about bricks. It's just, it is foolishness. The larger picture of that whole thing is there are three or four buildings that are dilapidated that are going to come down. And this existing developer may have reinvested other monies in this community, but because of the issues going on presently, they may say no. And they're going to end up in court costing the city money. They will probably prevail, but... That's, that's what people want. That's what you're going to get. Um, it's no different than a conservation commission at Favorite Foods out on the end of Interstate Drive because they want to build an addition and encroach on the wetlands buffer. Not the wetlands, the wetlands buffer. And they made the comment, well, we may just leave town. So we may not get anybody to come to town and develop, and we may lose industry. But in the infinite wisdom, I guess that's what, that's what they want. I, for one, don't like to see existing companies leave, and I want to do anything we can to attract, because that section of town at 85 Elm Street is in disrepair. Mm -hmm. And if you think that, a con that they're going to do what all we want and invest their money, it's not going to happen. So... All you people with good intentions, you may be driving future developers out. Um, and I understand it's election year, and I'm running for election, so we'll see what happens then. But I don't think it's going to be a good optic for this city, the way that we are treating at least one developer and one existing business. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Counselor. Ready. Further comments by Counselors? Any further comments by Counselors this evening? That being so, that brings us to agenda item number eight, which is communications. We have a presentation by Wright Pierce on the Constitutional Way con Complete Streets. All right, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Britt Ekstrom. I'm a project manager with Wright Pierce. Um, I, was, I was here back in May to present on the project, so a um, little more brief presentation than, than I did back then, but um, wanted to give you an update on where we're at with the Constitutional Way project. Um, quick overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, just go through the project location again, the project components provide an update on the project cost estimate and then um, update on schedule and then answer any questions you may have. Constitutional Way is uh, one of three complete streets projects that we're working on for the city. Uh, the project area is shown in yellow here. Uh, it encompasses the entire extents of Constitutional Way from High Street here to um, uh, Washington here. The project is pretty comprehensive. It rep proposes replacement to the existing sanitary sewer pipes and services, existing water main, uh, mains and services. It is going to replace the storm drainage system that's out there and also add some stormwater treatment. And then the roadway and the sidewalks would be fully reconstructed. There'd also be some streetscape components added to be consistent with the streetscaping that was done as a part of the high street project. So I'll just walk through a uh, little bit of detail of the different project components. First, I'll talk about the roadway. So with the proposed design, we are gonna extend the western uh, sidewalk a little bit from about six feet to nine feet. That's the side over here. This is the side that's closest to the Napa Shiva Market. And then we'll maintain the, the parking lane that's here now. That'll be eight feet wide. We'll have two 13-foot travel lanes and then a six-foot sidewalk on the eastern side. 
or the utility work that's proposed. We're going to be replacing all of the um, cast iron mains that are within the roadway with new ductile iron mains, replacing the water services and the fire services from the main to the right of way. The sewer, right now, most of the sewer in that area is actually outside of the right of way um, on the, the Legion side of the road. So we're going to be moving the or installing the new sewer within the right of way within the road so it'll be easier to access and maintain in the future um, and then with that there'd be new services installed to the properties that use the sewer in that area uh, to the right of way and then the storm drainage system will be replaced um, the, the pipes that are out there now are a combination of concrete and um, vitrified clay that are um, not great condition, so we're going to be replacing that, and we're actually going to be re, um, reconfiguring where the stormwater drains. Right now, it, it drains to a cross-country line, actually right out here, and then down um, ultimately towards Main Street. Instead of the water coming this way, now we're going to route it towards Washington, and then it will um, follow the drain down to Washington and into Main Street drainage system. We're also going to be installing two different stormwater treatment practices. Uh, I've got a picture of an example of one, which is a tree box filter um, here on the screen. So that is a system that will allow the stormwater to drain from the roadway into the tree well and then water the tree and then also provide some um, stormwater treatment with the media that's surrounding the root system. The other um, treatment practice is what we refer to as a filtering catch basin. So it's a it's kind of like a big catch basin with some filter media um, below the surface of the road that will that will treat the stormwater. So uh, this plan here is just a kind of a rendering of what the proposed improvements include. So it's a little hard to see, but the the red line is the existing um, limits of curb. So you can see down here on the uh, western side, we're going to be just extending that curb line a little bit. Um, this rendering here also shows those two tree box filters we're going to add here with these green dots. And then the, um, the other piece that's really hard to see is the street lighting. Uh, these little black dots here indicate um, ornamental street lighting that's going to be added, uh, similar or same style as to what's out on High Street. So oh, this brings us to the updated project cost. Um, this, is, this is probably the slide that's updated the most since I was here back in May. Um, we have increased the, the cost estimate uh, a little bit, and that's based on a couple things. One, um, we're always looking at current bid prices and where we're seeing projects come in. So um, we are still seeing things come in a little higher than than what our previous estimate was um, on lots of different projects. So we've accounted for that here. Um, we've also added a little bit more time um, for traffic control. We realize this is going to be a, a busy um, project area with businesses, so we want to make sure there's enough provision in the contract documents for the contractor to provide flaggers and help with the flow of traffic through construction. And then Finally, there was just some um, revising that we do along the way to adjust quantities as the design progresses. So all um, with the construction cost and then the cost to administer the project, um, construction total we're estimating right now to be $1.7 million. Um, the previous slide noted we are at about a 90% design level, so we're working to um, kind of add the finishing touches to the plans. We've got some comments back from, from city staff that we're working to address and working to have the design 100% complete by the end of the month and ready for bidding. Um, the bidding and construction are TBD because I think you're going to be considering that later tonight. Um, Right now is a, um, or early, late fall, early winter is a typically a, an advantageous time to bid because contractors are trying to line up their work for the following season. Um, but, you know, happy to help you put this out to bid whenever the council wishes. Um, and then construction, 
um, we're estimating about a, a seventh month construction period. That's what we've included in the contract docs. We think that means that the bulk of the work could be done within that one construction period and then some final paving and final restoration the following year. So with that, happy to answer any questions. Questions from council, councilor with them. Thank you. Rick, could you just, uh, for everybody at home and for other councilors that don't sit on the public works committee, uh, explain why we're extending that uh, westerly sidewalk out to nine feet. I believe it's for utilities, but if you'd clarify that. Right, yeah, there's, there's a couple reasons. Um, one, right now there are utility poles in, they're essentially in the road. So they're on the road side of the curbing. So that makes plowing up against the curbing really difficult. Um, so by bumping that curb line out a little bit, we'll get the, the utility poles in the same, they're gonna stay in the same location. Um, Eversource might be replacing a couple of them, but they'll, they'll be in that same location. So now the, the uh, utility poles will be behind the curb line. Um, the other thing is it um, just makes the sidewalk a little bit wider, a little bit easier to use for pedestrians. And then we are adding those two tree box filters in that, on that side of the road too. So a um, little bit wider sidewalk gives a little bit more room between the tree box filter and the back of the sidewalk. Further questions from council? Any further questions from council? Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Ron. One of the questions I should have asked when I was when we met in committee was: Is the, the drain system is it going to be integrated? Sometimes you see drain system integrated into the sidewalk. Is that just going to be a regular where actually they make a cut into the sidewalk, but it's below, and it's like a drain in that way, or is it just going to be a regular drain in the street? So, oh, are you talking about like a curb inlet? Like there's a little yes. cut into the curb. Yeah. Um, no, we're we might have that situation at the tree box filters just to make sure that we're getting the the water in there. But all the other catch basins would just be um, a typical square grate you'd see without that curb inlet is what we're is in the plans right now. Thank you. And just one more question. I love to ask this. The council always loves this. Is that the best price you can do on this? Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, so. For you don't have to answer that one. <laughs> no. Further questions from council? Any further questions from council? No, it doesn't, but she's not going to answer that. Further questions from council? Any further questions from council? None being so, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Brings us to agenda item number six, which is presentations of petitions. We have no petitions to present this evening. Brings us to agenda item number 10, which is the mayor's report. Honorable members of the council, I submit to you the mayor's report for Monday, October 9th, 2023. All of us have our places of peace. Some find peace among the grandeur of the mountains, while others find serenity in the flowering of a country brook. Our places calm us, ground us, balance us, and reconnect us to what is truly important, life, and all those we cherish, respect, honor, and love. Despite how disciplined we are, all of us lose focus. All of us neglect the fabric which binds us to each other and the earth and spirits which inspire and guide us. The strong connections we build are engraved upon us like the notches of the White Mountains. Some of these connections walk beside us as we continue life's journeys, while others are faces from the past who will continue to influence us for eternity. They mold our daily interactions, they influence our decision, and they help us grow. Throughout our childhood, we will experience influencers and continue the motion of influencing others. Yet the foundation of how we can continue to progress our nation, state, and city is quite basic. Connections. Each one of us offers to our community the, posit the positive and negative experiences of life. Each of us has talents, skills, weaknesses, and deficiencies. Each of us contributes a building block towards creating a society where every person will be honored and celebrated. And we will continue to ensure that each person can reach 
their potential, uncovering their hopes and dreams, and gaining an understanding of the connections each one of us shares. For 10 years, I have had the honor of leading and helping our community reconnect with the power, the skills, and the experiences each one of us holds, metamorphing this knowledge with a single mission dedicated to keeping Summersworth on the move. Each morning I arise and renew my dedication to this mission we carry forward, knowing with unwavering confidence that I stand beside citizens who share the same values. I take pride in knowing that in our community, we value each person as a living human being, one who experiences joy in sadness, happiness in pain, success in failure, and that in some is worth, we celebrate and honor all. As my final term comes to a close, it brings me confidence that knowing that these foundational pillars of our community have been restrengthened over the last decade. As an unknown family quote, as an unknown quote reads, family is not about blood, it is about who is willing to hold your hand when you most need it. Together we will extend our hand to all who need it. Together we will continue our journey of success for everyone who calls Summersworth home. Together we will continue to celebrate, overcome obstacles, and honor all. For together we will keep Summersworth on the move. Under nomination appointments and elections, under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Chris Horton for reappointment as a member of the Planning Board with a term to expire in October 2026. Keith, per Keith Perkins for reappointment as a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment with a term to expire in October 2026. Tammy F. Sheldon for reappointment as a member to the trustee of the Trustees Fund with a term to expire in October 2026. And Pamela Sawyer for reappointment as a member of the Supervisors of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2026. In accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the nominations will, re will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. Also in the nomination appointments and elections, the following are being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Sean Collins for reappointment as a member of the Conservation Commission with a term to expire in October, for appointment, not reappointment, sorry, for the term to expire in October 2026, and Amy Howard for reappointment as a Ward 4 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. This respectfully concludes my October 9th, 2023 Mayor's Report. Brings us to reports of standing committees, and we'll start with the Chair of the Finance Committee, Councilor Witham. No report. Hoping to meet next Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Government Operations Chair, Councillor Mishu. We haven't met, Your Honor. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Economic Development Chair, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. Economic Development Committee met on September 19th here in City Council Chambers. All members were present. We approved the minutes from the June 14th, 2023 uh, meeting. That motion passed unanimously. The next item on our agenda was a discussion on the former National Guard Readiness Center. Um, it came back to committee uh, for discussion on what the next steps might be for that property, uh, given that uh, the former proposal submitted by Chinberg Associates was not uh, moving forward. Uh, we had a long discussion on, on what options might be available for that property. Um, not not excluding the fact that you know many residents and other counselors might have wanted that to be a recreational facility um it, as as interesting as that might be the cost of maintaining that facility is somewhere around two hundred thousand dollars a year by the time you staff it and and uh do all the other associated caretaking with such a facility and uh we we didn't feel that that was an appropriate option at this point in time um, because of the impact it might have on the tax rate and otherwise. Um, we looked at putting out another RFP. Uh, we aren't entirely confident that that might be the best solution because of the response we got the first time around uh, with only one response. Um, and we did have, have some discussion about why there might have only been one response. Um, and it could be because of, of the, um, because Chinberg was the proposer, uh, it might have uh, 
discouraged other uh, people from bidding on the pro on the or submitting an RFP. So in the end, uh, given the success that we had uh, with putting the former police station uh, for sale with a realtor, we decided that that would be the option we'd recommend uh, for council consideration this evening uh, to uh, allow the city manager to hire a real estate agent for the sale of that property, knowing that any proposal would come back to us for consideration and uh, if it turned out to be something that we really didn't want to do, we could always reject the proposal. So that will be the option of the committee this evening. Uh, the next item we talked about was the one Winter Street property. Um, again, th th that's a property that a uh, council has decided uh, should remain with the city for the time being. Uh, with, you know, with a couple of options thrown out there about what might be done with it, whether it would be a parking facility or whether it would be uh, used for food truck vending or some other such service. Um, it's because of the, of the shape and design and, and the infrastructure associated with that property, it's very difficult to try to put together any sort of a reasonable uh, set of options without having some engineering work done on it. And so city manager had been working with a design group uh, that might be interested in providing us with some options. Um, and that cost might be about $35,000 to provide us a design that could be used for final construction. The uh, committee liked the idea of, of having uh, a professional look at that property and come back with some reasonable options. And so again, under uh, other on the agenda tonight, there's a recommendation from the Economic Development Committee uh, to allow that, uh, allow the city manager to hire a uh, consultant to provide some engineering proposals on that property. Um, we asked if there were any uh, updates about the Eclara property and uh, nothing significant at this point. And the uh, meeting was adjourned at 5.53 p.m. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to the Chair of the Public Safety Committee, Councillor Pepin. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Public Works and the Environment, Chair. Councillor Witham. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Public Works and Environment met last on September 20th. Um, we had a rather busy agenda. And one of the items that I can check off right away was a discussion of the Constitutional Way Complete Streets project. Uh, Britt Ekstrom from Wright Pierce presented the same material to us, and we had sort of a deeper dive conversation on a number of elements there. Uh, the Public Works and Environment Committee does support moving forward uh, with this project uh, once we're at 100% design, which again we hope by the end of the month. It would be our hope that we could uh, embrace this and tee it up for bidding uh, in the late fall, early winter, as she said, as that's an ideal time to bid such a project with construction uh, to take place next year. Uh, and finish the construction in the spring of 2025. Um, so that is uh, supported by the Public Works and Environment Committee. Next item we discussed was the Route 108 uh, City Sewer Extension concept. I'd reported a number of meetings ago that we had discussed whether or not the city should uh, finish uh, installing sanitary sewer from roughly uh, Willand Drive to the Dover Line um, in advance of the State of New Hampshire Route 108 Complete Streets project. Uh, the estimated cost for that sewer line extension is five and a half million dollars uh, that we would bond for 20 years. Uh, the difficulty in that uh, is that we would likely look for a betterment district, a betterment assessment fee for the properties that could potentially benefit from that sewer. Uh, interestingly enough, there are only 19 properties in that stretch of Route 108. Uh, doesn't mean you couldn't do a betterment assessment, but the assessment would be rather steep, and I do believe that property owners would balk at it. Um, so the, the, the the other thing is that some of the larger parcels, the Garabedian parcel in particular, do have access, albeit a bit cross country, to the sewer line on Willand Drive. So it is accessible to them. 
Uh, and uh, so not all 19 properties would necessarily benefit from the 108 extension as there are some other options. So all these factors considered, uh, the committee uh, is not, in, a, uh, is not uh, in consensus at this time to pursue that. Uh, I will say that we will probably discuss it at least one more time at Public Works in the Environment uh, at a future meeting. Uh, given the 108 Complete Streets project presentation that took place here in Council Chambers, what, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the engineers from New Hampshire Department of Transportation and their consulting engineers said maybe your cost could be uh, brought down if it were done as part of the Route 108 Complete Streets project and not as a separate standalone project. So uh, that at least caused me some pause to at least think about it a little bit more. So we'll think about it a little bit more, but for the time being, we're not uh, looking to pursue it. Next item on our agenda was to engage city staff with a conversation about our road resurfacing and sidewalk projects for the spring of 2024. Similar to Constitutional Way, uh, we have monies budgeted in our current fiscal year budget for this work. Uh, a little more than a million dollars available to us from different funding sources. Uh, Right now, the committee is looking at uh, tackling the segment of High Street from Washington West High to uh, approximately South Street. Uh, so that would take into account uh, the area of roadway that recently had the new sidewalk done as part of the TAP grant. Uh, we'd also look to take care of the sidewalk on the other side of the street, the uh, westerly side of the street. Uh, sort of a uh, mirror image to what was done on uh, the easterly side of the street. Um, it's a very heavily traveled sidewalk. It's heavily used by students walking to school. Uh, it's in a state of disrepair. That section of High Street is, is, is getting difficult uh, with a lot of cracking and potholing. Uh, it is a gateway to the city, so we're, we're looking to tackle that. Obviously, that's an expensive project just for that short segment. We're estimating somewhere around $700,000 to do both the sidewalk and the street. The street would require milling, uh, which is the grinding up of a couple layers of the hot top that are out there. Uh, we've also talked about sort of turning the corner, if you will, doing a mill and overlay of the section of West High Street, which seemingly every winter delaminates from about High Street down to Cemetery Road. Uh, we've uh, steered away from that for a couple of years, but we really need to tackle that. Economy of scale says we might be able to do that uh, at the same time. Uh, city staff was gonna uh, kind of revise their list uh, we, and look at a couple of other smaller streets to, to take us to the uh, sort of finish line, if you will, of our funding availability. Uh, one street that's emerged because it has a low pavement condition index is Kelwin Drive. Unfortunately, only about a third of Kelwin Drive is in Summersworth. About two thirds of it is actually in Rollinsford. Um, we've asked city staff to reach out to Rollinsford. If Rollinsford was interested in doing their portion, we might jump on board and do our portion. Uh, it would make sense and maybe have the same vendor. Uh, so that's an ongoing conversation. Uh, Council of Vincent also mentioned uh, Rulo Drive. Uh, I won't discuss Rulo Drive. I live there, so I can't advocate for it in my opinion. So uh, he advocated for it. So, uh, but city staff is going to revise the list based upon our discussion uh, and get back to us. Uh, probably at our meeting next week. Next item on our agenda was to um, reaffirm our desire to keep the intersection of High Black Water and Indigo Hill in the state's 10 year uh, highway plan. Um, uh, right now, the, uh, that project is estimated to redo that intersection at $3.4 million. I'll suggest to you that that is remarkably low, if, <laughs> that, that it will not get done for that amount of money. It's going to be five plus, I bet. But uh, right now, with that, uh, it would be a city share of $600,000 for that. Uh, we do desire to keep it in the 10-year uh, the plan. Um, again, I will remind everybody that we're hopeful that the 
congestion mitigation air quality project which is underway to improve the signals on High Street will at least address some of the signal timing there in the near term uh, but a redesign of that intersection is needed so we'll keep that in the 10-year plan there were no objections to doing so uh, I talked about the TAP grant project uh, that was the sidewalks on High Street some work down by the high school and middle school uh, and the trail from the high school, middle school over to Maplewood and out to Bartlett Avenue. That work is substantially complete. We are waiting on a few decorative light poles for in front of the high school, some railings to be installed on some stairways on High Street, but by and large that project is done. And uh, the CMAC project, which again is the signalized uh, intersections on High Street, uh, that work is underway. The vendor has started with the uh, handicap accessibility tip downs at all of the intersections if you drive up through there you've seen the excavation uh, that work will continue through the fall uh, and as some councilors have said it can't happen soon enough it is a terrible corridor with regard to the signal timing uh, we discussed a number of miscellaneous items uh, most of which revolved around sidewalks uh, and we adjourned our meeting at 357. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Recreation Chair, Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Councillor. Brings us to Agenda Item Number 12, which is Reports of Special Committees. Any reports of Special Committees? Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. We had a Traffic Safety Committee meeting on September 20th at 2 p.m. All members were in attendance. The first thing on the agenda was talking about handicapped parking spaces at the Noble Pines. We had a concern from um, some people that went up there with a busload of handicapped people. There was no place to park. Uh, so we had a discussion, and uh, Director Mike Pavinsky stated that he's going to be installing the handicapped spot signs for the parking area. Coast bus. Next thing on the agenda was coast bus. Uh, there was a concern that at the... Um, intersection of Bartlett Avenue and High Street where the crosswalk is that there were people standing there and sometimes when they saw him standing there waiting for the bus at the bus stop near the crosswalk they were stopping traffic um, so after some discussion they, we decided to take no action on it it was the safest place for the people to be uh, and if it's a small inconvenience then I guess we'll just live with it Lord's Court parking issue. Um, well, uh, Captain Duval stated that uh, it was an easy fix. Um, uh, we amend, we're going to amend the parking ordinance to restrict parking by posting no parking signs from November 15th to April 15th on Lord's Court because it's too narrow to have on-street parking during the winter months because of uh, ambulance and fire accessibility uh, and due to plowing. Um, the other months, uh, residents will be able to park, will be able to park. So we're going to do an ordinance change. I'm going to sponsor it myself, uh, along with other councilors if they're interested, uh, and they're going to, uh, draft up a, uh, ordinance change. We had a concern on Summer Street, uh, that people were driving, uh, at a high rate of speed, uh, in both directions. And at the meeting, I'm like, Summer Street's one way. So, and we all agreed Summer Street's one way, but what happened is during the construction of one of the buildings there on the corner, there's a new building, uh, somehow, some way, the sign got knocked down. So it was a simple fix. Uh, the sign's back up. I actually passed it the other day, so it's back up, which is an easy fix. Intersection of Blackwater Road and Old uh, Rochester Road. Uh, most of you or some of you understand that there's been several accidents down there. Uh, I believe some have been life-threatening, uh, maybe even taken lives. Uh, however, uh, it's been an ongoing thing. We've tried to update. Uh, we've gone to uh, taking down some trees in there to making the intersection a little wider for more visibility. Uh, we've put up stop signs that have... Um, uh, a flashing light that actually has uh, run by solar power. Um, we've tried to do everything we can, and it just seems to be consist consistent accidents there. So it, we actually tabled this. Uh, we want to see what the state DOT is going to say on this. So we've sent out uh, correspondence to the state DOT. 
Uh, road safety audit for West High Street, Maple Street, and Sunset Drive. Also, been a lot of accidents there. Uh, and what we're going to do is going to wait for the audit to uh, uh, come back. Um, and that's what we did. We tabled it also until the safety audit comes back. Pedestrian safety signs were another concern for Rocky Hill Road, uh, Otis Road, and Lily Pond Road. Uh, and Captain Duval said that there's always been a concern there of speed. Uh, he didn't feel that putting up additional signs was going to help. So what they're going to do is they're going to heavily patrol that area to try to slow down the, uh, the traffic. Uh, you know, I've worked in the area over there in my side business, and I'll tell you right now, Otis Road is like a racetrack. And people walk their dogs on Otis Road. And I see Marty, a council of Pepper, several times. And, you know, it's like people are just driving way too fast. Please, you're watching this, slow down a little bit. It's a dangerous road. It's curvy. It's dangerous. Um, there was another concern about uh, people doing U-turns uh, on High Street by Walmart. Uh, the, and it causing possibly a traffic, uh, could ca tra cause a traffic uh, incident. So we're going to put up uh, no U-turns on the islands there. Another, uh, finally, and the last concern is um, a two-hour parking on Main Street by the old GE, the former GE. Um, that was uh, done, uh, th so there's parking signs of only two-hour parking. Uh, those signs were constructed and put up during the old GE manufacturing when GE was doing their manufacturing plant. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to come up with an ordinance to amend uh, putting it from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that's all I have. The meeting was adjourned at 2.30 p.m. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees. Councilor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. School board met on September 26th. Uh, and there was actually some discussion on the uh, supplemental appropriation that's in our packet this night, or Ordinance 124. Um, they were concerned that it was going to require two readings before uh, we could take a vote on it. Um, and I spent some time trying to explain to them that that's, that's the procedure for any supplemental appropriation. Uh, it's required by the city charter. Um, I think there were still some school board members who wanted us to try to push it through this evening, and I explained that we couldn't do that. So if anybody from the school board is listening to this meeting tonight, you can look at the city charter, section 7.4.1 and 7.7a, and it will explain the process to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Further reports of special committees. Councillor Girding. Thank you. Um, I don't have the minutes in front of me, so I'll do my best, but uh, we had a meeting of the <clears throat> excuse me, Mayor's Commission on Arts and Culture. Um, the one discussion item we had was about a uh, billboard sign that we're putting up. Uh, and so during the meeting, the committee uh, discussed potential designs, and we ultimately chose a design that was pretty exciting. Um, let's see if I can actually pull it up on my phone so I can read it to you all. Um, but essentially, it's a design with a uh, two hands uh, forming a heart, uh, and inside the heart um, is a like blue with a rainbow uh, decal design. Uh, and then it says, if I can find it, I should have been more prepared. I apologize, everybody. Um, I'll have to get back to you. I can't, <laughs> I can't pull it up in time. I can't remember off the top of my head either. I'm so sorry. I'm coming in with a cold tonight. Um, but it has some uh, language about uh, safe community, Summersworth welcoming community. Um, and then hopefully that will run within the next couple of weeks, uh, pretty soon, I believe. And yeah, that was our one item. Thank you. Oh, I can stall. I can stall. You want me to stall? Got it. Okay. Yeah. You can sing a song. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Much appreciated. But yeah, so that will go up soon. Um, and hopefully, yeah, exactly. Teamwork. Um, hopefully that will look really great. I'm really quite excited about it. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Further reports of special committees. Any further reports of special committees? None being so, City Manager. Thank you, Your Honor. I offer the following comments that were my written report to Council and included in the meeting packet this evening for this evening's meeting. Um, under New Business Ordinance 124 regarding the supplemental appropriation of additional state adequacy grant funding for the school department. Uh, as mentioned, there'll be a, a little bit of redundancy here on some of these comments. Please indulge me. The Finance Committee met on September 20th 
and voted to recommend the full council to the full council the supplemental appropriation by a vote of two to one with Councilor Matt Girding recusing himself. I provided you a copy of the information that was provided to the school, uh, from the school business administrator, Katie Krause, to the finance committee regarding the school board's request. And as required by the city charter, I recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next regular council meeting on Monday. Do I have that date right? October 24th. I think it's the 23rd, isn't it? This is 23rd, I apologize for that uh, typo, that error. Without objection from council, we will schedule the public hearing for Monday, October 23rd, without objection. Moving on to the next ordinance being introduced to amend chapter 19th in the zoning regulations regarding solar and the use of solar. The zoning changes were approved by the planning board after several meetings, uh, workshop meetings, and forwarded to the city council for your consideration. I did provide you further information that was provided by Director Mayors outlining these changes. <coughs> and again, uh, wrong date, but I do recommend a public hearing be scheduled for the next regular council meeting on Monday, October 23rd, in accordance with city practice of passages of, for city ordinances. Without objection from council, we will schedule that public hearing. Without objection. Under other that we'll get into a little bit later, very briefly, <coughs> Uh, regards the use of a relative for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center property as recommended by the EDC of Council. The Economic Development Committee of Council met on September 19th and recommends to the full council that the city hire a real estate agent for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center and potentially hiring the uh, realtor that helped us with the former police station. On the next other item, regarding a consultant to prepare design alternatives to establish a public use of the former Breton's Cleaners property at One Winter Street, as forwarded and recommended by the EDC to have this discussion. They met and uh, are in support of hiring a consultant. I did reach out to a couple of consultants who uh, deal in this type of uh, work, and I did get a response from uh, Ironwood Design Group, LLC, and uh, that individual, one of the principals of that um, design group, Jeff Hyland, suggested a budget of at least $5,000 to complete a, a two to three concepts and at least $30,000 or so to move forward with the final design of one of the concepts that, that his team may come up with. And again, the Ironwood de team designed our Veterans Memorial. Uh, it seemed like the, the council, certainly staff, the council and the community was uh, very much um, applauded the uh, final design and, and the construction of that uh, Veterans Memorial. And um, again, the last item is in regards to going out to uh, bid for a constitutional way complete streets project as recommended by the Finance Committee at their meeting on September 20th. And uh, the funding for the project is coming from both the enterprise funds, which would be the water and sewer work, and the general fund. So it's 80-20 split or, or somewhere thereabouts. I did provide you a memorandum from Finance Director Smith outlining the projected cost and tax rate impact that you have for this discussion a little bit later in the meeting. Under informational items, a couple of things I did want to mention to you and provide an update on. Tri-Cities Willen Road Warming Center Services, Dover, Rochester, and Summersworth will be issuing a joint request for proposal to operate an extreme winter warming center at this location as we have in years past. The action was the result of a meeting held last Thursday here at uh, Summersworth City Hall with County Commissioner George McGlaris, the three mayors, uh, two of the city managers and one of the deputy city managers from Dover attended. At the meeting it was decided to issue an RFP as soon as possible. I'm sure it'll be going out uh, if it hasn't gone out today in the next day or two. Um, since last year's management team has indicated they've decided not to operate the center at this time. I did provide you some further information in regards to the uh, letter we received uh, from the folks who operated the warming center last year. High Street Signals and CMAC grant that we've been uh, talking about for quite a few years. I did provide you an update from our project consultant TEC on the progress of the work and what the schedule looks like for the upgrade of the high street tra traffic signals improvements and equipment, associated equipment. 
Landfill Site Solar Array, that's moving forward. And again, I provided with some correspondence, which, which was an update from Amoresco Project Development Team on regarding their schedule for the Landfill Site Solar Array. And that's it, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. It brings us to agenda item number 13, which is nomination appointments and elections. Under nomination appointments and elections in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward this evening and placed in nomination. Chris Horton for reappointment as a member of the Planning Board with a term to expire in October 2026. Keith Perkins for reappointment as a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment with a term to expire in October 2026. Tammy F. Sheldon for reappointment as a member to the Trustee of the Trust Funds with a term to expire in October 2026. And Pamela Sawyer for appointment as a member to the Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. In accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the nominations will remain open until the next regular scheduled meeting. Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to suspend Council Rules to act on appointment D, Pamela Sawyer. Council with the moves that City Council rules be so far suspended as to allow a confirmation vote on appointment D, Pamela Sawyer, for appointment as a member of the supervisor of the checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. Is there a second? Seconded by Councillor Vincent. Question for the Council is on suspension of Council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And City Council rules are so far as suspended. The nominee is before Council for action. Council with them. Move that we approve the nominee. Council with them moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councillor Vincent. Question for the Council is on the confirmation of the nominee. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the nominee is so far as confirmed. Also, under nomination appointments and elections, the following are being brought forward this evening for a confirmation vote. Sean Collins with appointment for appointment as a member to the Conservation Commission with a term to expire in October 2026. What are the wishes of the Council? Councilor Witham. Move that we confirm the nominee. Councilor Witham moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Question over the Council is on confirmation of the nominee. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And, and the nominee is so far as confirmed. Also before the Council this evening is Amy Howard for reappointment as a Ward 4 Supervisor of the Checklist with a term to expire in October 2028. What are the wishes of the Council? Councilor Austin. I'll move to confirm Amy Howard. Councilor Austin moves that the nominee be so far as confirmed, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Question for the Council is on confirmation of the nominee. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the nominee is so far as confirmed. Brings us to agenda item number 14, which is unfinished business. We have uh, no unfinished. So, sorry, brings us to agenda item number 14, which is items which have been laid upon the table. We have no items which have been laid upon the table. Brings us to agenda item number 15, which is unfinished business. We do have some unfinished business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 1424. Resolution number 1424, to authorize the city manager to contract with J&B Contracting of Dover, New Hampshire for the replacement of the Willen Pond Trail Bridges. Resolution 1424, I've been ready first and second time, is open to further amendment. No amendment be it offered. The chair will obtain a motion on Resolution 1424. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a, I, I make a, mo a motion to uh, move on uh, Resolution 1424. Councillor Vincent moves that Resolution 1424 be, so far, be adopted, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Discussion? None being so. The question over the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 1424. If you are in favor of the adoption of Resolution 1424, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Austin. Yes. Misho. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yes. Resolution 1424 is adopted. Brings us to agenda item number 16, which is new business. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on ordinance number 124. Ordinance number 124, supplemental appropriation of additional state adequacy grant funding for the school department, October 9th, 2023. The city of Summersworth ordains that pursuant to section 7.7A of the city charter, the annual budget for the city of Summersworth for fiscal year 23-24 is amended as follows. Appropriate $1,953,394 from, from additional state adequacy grant revenue to the school department budget as follows. Original budget, $29,109,022. Amendment, $1,953,394. 
revised budget $31,062,416. Approved as to funding, Scott A. Smith, Director of Finance and Administration, recorded by Kristen LePan, City Clerk. Background. This ordinance appropriates additional state adequacy grant funding made available after the budget was developed for the school department. The estimated adequacy grant provided by the state during the budget development process was $7,226,170, and the actual adequacy grant is $9,179,564. The intent is to use this appropriation for unanticipated special education expenditures, complete the middle high school roof project, complete the school-based health clinic, and other expenditure requests for each school and district-wide. This ordinance requires a public hearing and requires a two-thirds majority vote of the City Council after the public hearing, subject to Section 7.4.1 and Section 7.7a of the City Charter. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Don Austin, approved City Attorney. Ordinance number 124 remaining in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Chair, Your with regard to the next ordinance, Ordinance 224, I'd like to suspend council rules and read by title only. Council with a moves that city council rules be so far as suspended as to allow a first reading on ordinance number 224 by title only, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Question for the councils on suspension of council rules. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it in city council rules are so far as suspended. Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on ordinance number 224 by title only. Ordinance number 224, to amend chapter 19 zoning by adding section 4.C, conditional use permit, section 33 solar, and table 4.A.6, use of solar. Ordinance number 224 will remain in first reading until the next regular scheduled meeting. Brings us to items under other, other A, a vote to you, a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center property as recommended by the Economic Development Committee. The vote will be for the use of a realtor, either yes or no. Discussion. Council Witham. Thank you. Um, unless comments by other councilors steer me in another direction, I don't plan to support this tonight. Um, I think it's a, uh, a bit of a fool's errand to go down this road. Um, this council last time I checked was very divided on the final disposition of the National Guard property on Blackwater Road. Uh, there are some of us on council that favor some element of housing, others don't. There are some of us on council that favor uh, use as a city building community center, I'll use that uh, term. Uh, some of us don't. Uh, there are some on the council that uh, prefer it to be some sort of commercial development. Some of us don't. Um, I think we're divided maybe a third, a third, and a third, which is probably the most divided this council has ever been on any issue, bar none. Uh, and I'm not sure what's changed. So if we go out to a realtor and the realtor comes back and only a third of us support the idea, what are we doing? Right. Uh, uh, I, until this council can get on the same song sheet, I, I don't think this is a, a good approach. Um, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. <clears throat> Question for the council is a vote authorizing the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion? Councilor Pepin. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> you know, I, I look at it this way. The city council is not in the realtor business. Um, you know, I, I look at the, the police station that we were dealing with, that was vacant from 2008. I kind of, a little upset when I hear people saying, well, what's the rush? Uh, when we've had, been working on this thing, Councilman Witham, Councilman Gertie, with Stratford County, I mean, that was over a year project. Uh, what they suggested got kind of like down the toilet. Um, and. Do we want to keep it recreation? I know we had total big discussions on that. The financial burden that it's going to cost for the city to keep that as recreational is astronomical. I mean, I don't know how um, people complain about their tax rate now. I can't see us adding that onto it. At least I, I'm not in favor of adding it onto my tax bill. Um, somewhere along the line, this council has to make a decision. 
you're not going to sell that property under residential. Do I believe we ought to cut the baseball field out and make that not part of the part of the proposal? Yes, that's one option that I do. I don't know what else for options. Like Councilman Witham just said, we can't agree on anything in here. Uh, and I don't know what the answer is. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see some proposals come in from outside of this body because we can't seem to agree on anything. At least listen to it, look at it, have the planning board look at it, have the citizens in that area look at it, at the proposals, and then make a decision on it, on what the people in that area, or what we think we could support and what we can't support. But sitting on our hands, we sat on our hands from 2008 with the police department, and I don't see this going to be any, changing any difference in the near future for the, for, for the armory. That is not even talking about possibly the hazardous material that's in that building. We do know there is some. Um, how long are we going to wait till we get another grant to fix that up like we did the police department? We're just shoving things down the road. Somewhere along the line, we have to make a decision. We tried to make a decision on the Market Street project, the Brenton, old Brenton's cleaners. I mean, and I kind of have to laugh because we had people from Barrett come over and say, well, we don't want a, a Domino's in Somerswick because we don't like the looks of it, and now they're going to have a Domino's in Berwick, so we, Somerswick can look at it. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't understand the, the whole situation. We try our best. I mean, I was all in favor for the Domino's, and I changed my mind because I do want to support our businesses in the downtown area, and, and the two pizza places that we have do an out, outstanding job, and they basically changed my mind on the deal. It, it's not that... But I do believe in some type of free enterprise, and I'm not even going to get on the historical right now. I'll save that for closing comments. But I do think we need to take some type of action in the near future here instead of sitting on our hands and probably if none of us will be on the council whenever the decision is going to be made or what's going to be done to that property. That's all i got to say right now. <coughs> Question for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councillor Vincent and then Gibson. Thank you, Your Honor. What I like about sitting next to my counselor here, Pepin, is that we can disagree and still go out for coffee. <laughs> so my thought is this. Okay, so the police department was one thing. It had a building on it that we had to sell. The National Guard Armory property, it has a building on it. Do we want to put a value on it? It has a couple buildings on it. Do we want to put values on it? I don't know. What I do know is that I don't know why I'd want to rush property. If the city is hurting for money, then yeah, let's sell the property as fast as we can. But if the city's not hurt, and remember, this is only one man's opinion. It might not be the rest, but this is the crazy way that Councilor Vincent thinks being involved in business, building, and real estate for a while. I don't understand what the hurry would be. If we're broke, then let's sell it as fast as we can. But property is actually worth more than the dinero, money. I would like to see, possibly, to maybe get an assessment of the value. So then, if somebody said, hey, you want to know what? We had that property assessed. You're going to get... $2.8 million for it. Okay, that might be a different story. Am I against a realtor? No, but I'm not for if the realtor gets a buyer, we have to work on it or, or, or act on it. That's just my simple thoughts. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote to, for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councillor Gibson and then Girding. I do agree with, sorry. I do agree with Council and Vincent on, I think the property should be valued. Um, I was not in favor of the Chinberg proposal when it went out for RFP. Um, because I thought what he was offering for the property, considering everything else that was coming from the city, was a joke. Um, I'm, I'm open to 
having a realtor take it over because you've already gone the R RFP, ah, am I saying that right, um, route once and you got one proposal. Why does anybody think that's going to change now? I don't. Um, you have to approve a, a sale regardless of anything else and it, the biggest thing with these properties is as Councilor Pepin said is the city loves to sit on them and do nothing because I don't even want to go into the reasons but yes property has value now and in the future but who's to say that that value is going to change between now and the future. I just say try to find out what's, what the property is worth to somebody to develop and go from there. Um, that's it. Of course, for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councilor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as a member of the Economic Development Committee who voted in favor of this, I will be supporting it tonight as well. Um, a part of, I think, our decision making at the Economic Development Committee level was really trying to figure out what, in fact, Council wants from this project. So that might be my interpretation, but it seems that we've bounced this project around from committee to Council to, you know, a work group to, it seems like it's been everywhere and we've yet to kind of find the perfect uh, bullseye, if you will, uh, or you know, to be able to actually do something with it. And so um, it, when it came back to Economic Development Committee, we were, again, kind of stuck with this, uh, you know, these options of like, okay, well, now what? Like, we've tried the RFP. What's next? It seemed like council really uh, was in favor of the realtor process when we went through that with the police station. Let's give that a shot. And so um, I think it just is a matter of trying to figure out what folks want because I there's been tons of mixed messages. Um, I certainly feel like my head is spinning just from this one single project. Uh, and again, I would say if it's not supported tonight, then I think we just need to have some sort of workshop or something to figure out, in fact, what we actually want because it's becoming quite a mess and I think it's a little embarrassing. Um, and I'm just kind of getting tired of it, <laughs> honestly. Um, so again, that's kind of my just like, I'm just throw that out there. but. <clears throat> At the very least, I do support this. I think that the process went smoothly with the police station. Um, we've heard all of the options at this point. If we go through this realtor route, um, we will get actual proposals that we can then look at and agree upon or disagree upon um, and either move forward with or not move forward with. Uh, it at least gives us another step in the right direction to have our eyes on project plans and ideas. Um, and I think that that's a step in the right direction as opposed to just continuing to sit on it. Um, if we sit on it, then we need to, as a council, actively work together to figure out what it is we want because I do not want to continue to sit on this. I don't think many of us do. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councilor Austin. I'll move this way. Everyone will get a turn. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Councilor Austin. Thank you, and thank you, Councilor Girding, for your comments. I think that's uh, precisely the conversation we had at the committee level. I think it's, I'm, I'm a little bit disturbed by the concept that if we're broke, we'll sell it, and if we're not broke, we'll keep it. I'm not sure that that's the other philosophy that I buy into in, the, in this uh, decision-making process. Uh, I think Councilor Witham is absolutely correct through the whole process of trying to determine what to do with this property, and, and he was chair of the commission that took a look at that and come, came back to council and recommended some options, and council was all over the place. Um, and that may be exactly the same as it is now, and I think that the longer we continue to debate this, the longer we'll remain divided on the issue. I, I think it's worth our effort to get some solid, real proposals for that property. If none of them 
satisfy us not if none of them work for the community in that lives in that area if none of them fits into the uh, structure that, that um, is best suited for there and if none of them are in the best interest of the city then we reject them but I think in the best interest of the city we need to move forward on this and see what opportunities might present themselves for this property thank you Question for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councillor Cameron and then Messier. Thank you, Your Honor. I think I agree with part of the problem on some of these boards is that we can't agree on anything. And we've seen it in the past that as we, not our board here, but as in past boards, buildings have sat and sat and sat. And the longer you wait on something, the more expensive it gets to be to fix it or do whatever it is you're going to do with it. We all have been divided on this one. I mean, I, I'll say my concerns have been the baseball field because that's one of my pet peeves over there is the baseball field and keeping it intact. Um, we have heard from the community and what they've wanted from it. We have had an RFP on it. I, I don't think a realtor would be a bad idea because anything that they bring forward to us, we're going to have to vote on anyway. It's not like we're just going to jump on and say, yeah, let's go for it. That we're going to have to agree as a group to do this. So am I in favor of the realtor? Probably. Um, I don't want to sit on anything for another 10 years either. I saw it with the Hilltop School. Seen it with the police station. Um, like to see the city keep moving forward and not backwards. So that's my take on it. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. For discussion, Councilor Messier. Yeah, um, let's just, everybody knows my stance on that, that I'd like to keep the building and the Little League field. I think we can move to isolate off the Little League field, take action and leave that. The realtor may find a developer or one may come forward and say, you know what, I can incorporate the Omri building and build some lots, I mean, build some houses on some of the property where it's a win-win for the city. But to sit and do nothing and watch a build building fall apart and become decrepit is not something that I'm, you know, I'm willing one more time, but with a professional realtor, whether it's the one that we, I prefer the one that we used um, on the former police station and see what comes forward because the sit and do nothing is nothing more than sitting and doing nothing. Um, there was comments made early, earlier about adding some caveats to it. Let that go through the planning process. I'm not going to add more, more and be a hypocrite where developers aren't going to develop because some people in the neighborhood don't want it so they'll just restrict it. Um, so that I'm going to vote for at least seeing what a realtor can do. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of the realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, <laughs> Councilor Witham, I will make my way around, guys. We see you all. I'll get to you. Council with them. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Girding says his head is spinning. Mine is splitting, I think, is the better word. So back in the day, you, if you wanted to go somewhere you, that you, weren't, you didn't know quite how to go there, you would get a map. You might go to AAA and get a map, right? Or you'd go to the gas station and get a map to see how you were going to get there. These days, you might use an app like Waze or... Uh, MapQuest or something like that. And if you were to open up Waze or MapQuest, they would say, where are you going? Because to have the map, you need to have a destination. Uh, I'm not sure we have a destination here, so I'm not sure where we're going. But every now and again, I'll get in my car and I'll go for a nice Sunday ride. I'm not going anywhere, just driving. So I'll go along for the ride on this one. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of the realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Councilor Vincent, Gibson, and then Mishu. Hearing the rest of the council, I don't think I had any influence on anyone here, which is no surprise. <laughs> so, with that being said, 
I would go with a realtor. However, it would be nice to break off the ball field. Uh, I don't know if I can. I know. I know you just said that. I know it's been said, but that's not the way this is being written, right? Or, or do we have? Maybe I should ask. Is this? Do we have Any this manager. option? If I, if you could, um, maybe expand a little bit. First, to answer that question, just a, a couple other quick comments, if I may. Without objection. Please, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. The EDC was recommending. We we discussed that at the Economic Development Committee of Council on whether the city should move forward and subdivide it now, or make that a condition because they're going to ask for conditions from us. We're not going to get a firm proposal on what's going to happen there. But they are going to, unless they're doing a recreational project, they're going to ask the city to consider some zoning changes. So there is going to be some give and take, at least from my, in my, uh, from my perspective, them perhaps asking us for some zoning relief because it's only recreational. And we, they, they could subdivide. We could get, get into negotiations on how much we pay or they pay for the subdivision. So that, that was a recommendation to carve that little leaf field out and keep it in the hands of the city and then and lease it as we are now to the Little League. We do have a lease now since we took it over from the National Guard to the, the state government. So um, we won't get a firm proposal or a complete layout. That has to, as Councilor Messier mentioned, has to allow zoning to do that. Uh, but it will need perhaps some zoning relief depending on what the end result is that they see that property, you know, taking shape as. And then just, just to touch while I have the microphone, if you don't mind, yeah, if you could give me clear direction on whether uh, we're okay moving forward utilizing this uh, realtor again. We have in the past gone out and re uh, requested a couple of uh, proposals, not in a formal sense, but we could certainly do that again. Um, we certainly were successful with uh, this particular realtor, not only in this, but for other city-owned property that we acquired through tax deed. Working with the Finance Committee, we looked at different uh, realtors in the past. So if I get clear direction on that also. So hopefully I answered your question, didn't confuse the issue at all. You did. And one more comment, if you I may. You are still recognized, Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Um, so we can deny any proposal that comes before the Council, correct? Nothing has been voted on. So therefore, any proposal by by a realtor or anyone else would have to be moved through the process by this council. Thank you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, I have Gibson and Mishu. Before I recognize you, Councillor uh, Gibson, just a little bit of a background on this project again. Remember when, when this was handed over to us, through the mayor's office, a commission was formed which uh, several members of this committee sat on, uh, vetted several proposals, of which this body decided it would go in none of those directions. Um, so for, for a lack of a better term of this body trying to navigate, as we've said, without a compass direction, I, I think we are clear on. Um, after several more discussions with this, I then through the mayor's office moved this back to the Economic Development Committee to avoid a laundry list agenda of all kinds of proposals of us again trying to steer through the ocean without a compass or any other form of navigation. Not that this is a threat, but it isn't. But if this is not passed this evening, then it is my intention that I will schedule, we have three meetings left, we can make that four, that I will schedule a special meeting of which I will open it up for everyone's ideas to be on that agenda, and we will see which one moves. So if someone comes up with a proposal to have Cape Canaveral North and we'll launch the space shuttle on that site, like we'll that. see if zoning would hold up to it, and that will be on the agenda. But it will be my intent, again, for one, thank you, Councillor Cameron, who cannot sit on this project, and I only have three meetings left. However, I cannot sit back and not see any action occurring. Um, just because of the history, again, with the Hilltop School, this body was able to move that into a project. We've been able to move the police station. We will see if we can come up with some navigational point. We do have a proposal before us this evening. We'll see if this body so wishes to indulge in going in that direction. If it does not, we, I will be talking with the city manager. We will schedule a special meeting. Uh, for those of you that was wondering where we would go uh, with no compass direction from this. Again, further discussion. Councillor Gibson, thank you. You are recognized. Thank you. 
I can agree with a lot of what's been said about this tonight. But the one point that the mayor has brought up is we need a compass. Well, you turn it over to a realtor, you get your direction of whatever comes in, whoever comes in, with a proposal for the use of that property. And as Mr. Vincent pointed out, we have to approve it. So what the hell? We can't agree on it in council, so let somebody else do it. I mean, that's how y you go outside your group to look for ideas, and this is the easiest way to get those ideas. Because a developer, if he's interested, he's going to come in and he's going to present something to you. And he's going to be thinking about what's palatable to this group because he knows he has to get it approved by us. So the worst that happens is something comes back and we say no. That's the worst scenario. Otherwise, we say yes, and guess what? It's not our problem anymore. Planning, zoning, you name it, that's the individual boards within the city have a say and can control what happens with that property. I will only say one thing. If we're going to have another meeting, I want to talk about instead of updating the library, we build a new one there because six and a half million dollars for an update and we just spent, what was it, 12 for a brand new fire department? Nine. Okay. I rest my case. Thank you. Well, I certainly respect your proposal. That won't be happening. It will be a single issue, and it will be on the National Guard. <laughs> Again, this is the Summersworth City Council, not the United States Congress, and they don't look too well about how they manage their affairs oh, lately either. So God. question before a council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Councilor Mishu. Thank you, Honor. Here we are, as one councilor mentioned, that we're all divided three, three, three. I can guarantee you the city of Summersworth is also divided just like us. Some want it to be uh, recreational, some wanted a community center, some want housing built there, and there's a few people that actually told me, leave it alone, it's fine the way it is. We've been sitting on buildings, not us particularly, but over the years, past councils, all that, been sitting on buildings and just kicked the can down the road. Maybe it's time that we just, one more whack at the piano, as uh, Councilor Witham would say, and see what a real estate agent could bring in for us. This way here we can have a better idea what we can do with it. If there's no offers, then it's out of our hands. I'll let the next city council that's get voted in, let them handle it. Thank you. Question before the, question before the council is a vote for the use of a realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center. Further discussion, Council Witham. I will say, Your Honor, your idea of a special meeting to, to deal with this uh, resonated with me for a, a millisecond, but it would be this conversation all over again. So um, uh, I don't have a lot of optimism in this option, but it's worth a try. I think we don't know what we don't know. The difficulty is when whatever that option or options are come back to us, <laughs> we're going to be right back here at this very same discussion. So maybe it buys us some time to acquiesce around an idea or two uh, that, that we can get there. Um, and although maybe it's not a space shuttle, I will tell you that the, the town of Warren, New Hampshire, just northwest of Plymouth, has a redstone rocket in its town square. So uh, anything's possible. So I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Question of the council is a vote for the use of the realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center property. Further discussion? None being so, I have informed the clerk we will be doing a roll call vote. If you are in favor of the use of a realtor, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, Your Honor, one okay. final point just the city manager asked. Uh, I, I would consider this professional services. We don't need to bid it. We've had good history with um, Heather uh, Kretschmar as the realtor. Uh, and could I make that part of this motion? There is, there is no objection to making this part of the motion. Unless, and, unless there is objection, we will add this into the motion. Is there any objection? 
Without objection, we will roll this into the motion. Again, the question before the council is a vote for the use of the realtor for the sale of the former National Guard Readiness Center property. If you are in favor of a if you are in favor of using a realtor, you will state by saying yes. If you are opposed, you will state by saying no. Chair recognizes the clerk to call the roll. Councillor Pepin. Yes. Vincent. <laughs> yes. Gibson. Uh, yes. Austin. <laughs> yes. Michaud. Yes. Witham. Yes. Girding. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Messier. Yeah, smile. The vote is authorized. <laughs> Other B, vote for the use of a consultant to prepare design alternatives to establish a public use of the former Breton Cleaners property, 1 Winter Street, as, rec as recommended by the Economic Development Committee. The vote will be for the use of a consultant. Discussion. Councilor Witham. I hesitate, but it's important. I support this. Uh, it, it is going to cost us, uh, you know, thirty-five thousand dollars, but uh, I, I think we need to do that to move this uh, in a meaningful direction. You know, part of our deal with the EPA and the state, where we got the brownfields money to clean up the property, was that it be uh, returned to some sort of valuable use, and therein lies the struggle here. Uh, if we didn't have that edict by the EPA, I might balk at this a little bit more, but where that is the edict, I, I think we need to do this to move the ball in a meaningful direction. Thank <clears> you. <throat> Question over the council is a vote for the use of, the con of a consultant to prepare design alternatives to establish public use of the former Breton Cleaners property. For the discussion, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to be clear, I understood the way that the city manager explained it was $5,000 for come up with a temporary plan and then if we liked them it would move on to the $30,000 for three other types of buildings is that correct city manager no yes the city would have to spend some upfront money to develop perhaps two or three concepts bring them back to council perhaps through committee on <clears throat> which ranking them or something of that nature then once we're the, the council agrees to moving forward with some construction money come up with a final design and eventually uh, hire a contractor or bid it out or wh whatever we end up with so there is a two-step at least a two-step process okay. to get a final design and idea okay. so the first step is five grand am I correct and then it comes back to council, and if we like the move, he's going to do a final thing for thirty thousand. So it's not thirty-five thousand right at the beginning. I just want to make that clear to the council. City manager. Clear. Thank Great. you. Question for the council is a vote for the use of a consultant to prepare design alternatives to establish public to establish public use of the former Breton Cleaners property. Further discussion. Council Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if price isn't problem for folks I just want to remind everybody that we just uh, acquired almost two hundred thousand dollars from the sale of a property downtown that would be well suited to use towards economic development projects such as this thank you question over the council is a vote for the use of a consultant to prepare design alternatives to establish public use of the former Breton cleaners property further discussion none being so all those in favor of the use of a consultant please state by saying aye aye, aye. 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 those opposed no the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the consultant use is authorized. Other under C, vote to release bid specifications this year for spring construction for Constitutional Way Complete Streets Project as recommended by the Finance Committee. The vote will be to release bid specifications for this year. Discussion? None being so. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and the bid specifications are released. Brings us to agenda item number 17 which is closing comments by visitors. Any closing comments by visitors? Please come forward, state your name, your address, and the ward you live in if you have that applicable information. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. My name is Richard Brooks, live at 18 Linden Street, Ward 1. Uh, last month I attended the Living in Summersworth, a housing plan for the city. And I've got to say that we had a lot of residents show up to that that seemed to truly care about this city. and. After the televised section of that, we were broken off into three groups and discussed three different elements of this. That was not televised. I don't know if you guys got minutes of each of those groups or not, but there was the group that I was in had some very interesting discussions about the National Guard property 
And there was several ideas that came out of that. Um, one of them that I haven't even heard mentioned is uh, tiny houses. It's just another form of housing that's really it's controversial, so I'm sure that would open up a whole bunch of other discussion too, but it's something that could be geared towards affordable housing. And I think it's certainly something we should consider and also take a look at. Um, that same group, there were several people in there that discussed the fact that they moved to Summersworth based on the historic character of the downtown. And that shows that there is a draw there. This historic character that we've preserved, that so many other communities around us have done away with, is something that does draw people. And we, I know we've obviously got a huge debate about this situation right now, and I just don't wanna see anybody move too fast and let their emotions get in the middle of it. Um, I know I'm sitting on the HDC and I'm right in the middle of that. And the developer through that has kind of played hardball, if you ask me. I don't think that they care about Summer's Worth as much as people wish they would. And <sighs> listening to them speak, I, I hope you would lo look back at many of the meetings that they've attended. The ZBA asked about costs. They didn't want to give them up. They always throw in their opinion of we want this we want that and if you look at their initial proposal that they sent to that they came to the HDC with which I'd also like to remind you we when we redid our ordinances recently we tried to bring up a conceptual review the idea with that was to have an initial conversation without a plan to really work on where the sticking points would be and try to work to get an idea of what both want so that when they did develop a plan, it would be something that would work for everyone. And when they come to that initial conceptual review, they had a plan already. We had three meetings of a conceptual review. I don't think that's what we intended that to be. And I don't, I'm not trying to blame anyone, I just don't think it worked out the way we intended. And that plan that they initially proposed is almost identical to the plan they brought back as the revised plan that got denied. So th it's almost like they said, you know what, we didn't, we, we went through all this work, made it look like we we're working with you, and then we didn't. We want to do what we did in the first place to begin with. So there, there's a lot of moving parts to this that please look at the whole picture and everything about this. You know, and some other moving parts that are not considered here. I hear that there's a two-year wait for a, a court date if they want to escalate that to court. I don't see them waiting for that. Maybe they're going to come back before us, and maybe we can come up with a plan that really does summer's worth well. And I hope that we can do that, because I'm not a fan of the big building. I've said that from the beginning. But if they could make that look like Queensbury Mill, some, and I said this at the ZBA meeting, and I'm going to say it again here, maybe brick just on the ground floor as a foundation. It's a normal feature of material used on foundations. Maybe it could be the granite that's off that wall that's there. I mean, there's several options, but, and then have clapboard on the top and have windows that repeat themselves as mill buildings do. So it looks like a mill building like we have many of here in town. And I, that's really what I would like to see. I'm just one person again, but if they could make windows that repeated the same window in a uniform way down the whole side, lost the bump in bump out so it looks like a mill building not a modern various you know features to it which you know initially we kind of thought maybe various building fronts to make the building a large building look like four or five buildings that that was one thought it didn't go that way instead they had strips of brick and you know i don't think that fits the character and i voted against that initially as well um so you know, th there's certainly some give and take here, and I would probably approve a l building the size that it is if we could get it to really look like a mill building. And like I said, that's the uniform windows running down the whole side, a flat facade, even if it's clapboard, bricks on the bottom, and some real trim. And I, and I don't mean the fancy trim that costs a bunch of money. I'm just talking a real trim that's four or five inches, which is just a typical thing on old buildings. 
it, it's a simple little feature that costs nearly nothing more than checking a box to say thin trim or wider trim. And you know, th there's really a lot of stuff here that could still work out. And I think they're playing hardball with us. Sometimes we have to play hardball with them. I, I hope it works out, and I truly want to see something built there. I'm not opposed to development. I just want to make that clear to everyone here. We just need something that fits. Because right now, Berwick is showing us up huge. Look at the two buildings they're building. And they've got a lot more of that fancy feature to it. And they're going to they're gonna look like the old historic town that is all new. Just my thoughts on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Further closing comments by visitors? Brad Perdette, Three Blackwater Road again. Um, in full disclosure, I sit on the Zoning Board of Adjustment and was part of the decision last week and only choose to speak to my comments. One of the uh, comments I made that night, and I encourage you all as a council again, I think at some point the council does need to wrangle at the council level with what a historic district is and what we want it to do for our city. I think it becomes a challenge for the zoning board, and I say this as a board member, to many applicants. We are a quasi-judicial board. We are there for specific reasons to address specific redresses where the ordinances do not work in a specific application. As, an a as a zoning board member, I attempt to stay focused on that and not go any further. I think there was a lot of discussion, and I'd like to speak to the historic district. I think there's been a lot said. It's just a bunch of junky old buildings. I think we need to look at it at two levels, and I encourage you to do so through this motion. We have specific buildings with specific value, and for that, I'd like to see more cataloging done. I'd like to see a commitment from the city to do that. But I also think we need to look at it more broadly. What we have in that area is one of the best surviving examples in the state, to my knowledge, of mill housing down Elm and other houses in that area. So whether they're clad in asbestos or vinyl, we have the ability to preserve an area around those mills that has some historic significance. We have a cultural commission in this city. I think arts and culture are reinforced by having a historic district. Again, that being said, I think it's upon the city to define in the best way possible what that is and how as a city, if we're going to ask of citizens to participate we give them some value for that participation. And finally, to Mr. Brooks's point, I think we do need to recognize, and I, I am sure that you all do, that the aims of a developer and the aims of the council and what both are going for is different, and I hope that is considered. Thank you. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? Hello again, Laura Berry, uh, Ward 4, uh, 211 Green Street. Sorry, is that better? <laughs> so um, like the two others before me, I just had a couple of closing comments, understanding from further comments earlier in the night about possibly having an ordinance come forward around the HDC. So um, there are two things I kind of want to talk about specifically with regard to that. I just want to make sure that we remember the HDC used to not exist. It was put in place for a reason. Our city wanted it. And most of what that was, because we had houses that weren't being maintained, we had um, the plaza built before these kind of things were in place. And if I might time me wrong, I apologize, but from my understanding, all of that was done before the HDC was put into place. With that said, I very much am happy that another person talked about our mill workers housing. I constantly say this with my board, I'm gonna say it here, Preservation is not about pretty buildings. It is about our history. Some of mill buildings are gonna be the plainest, simplest buildings you will ever see, but they are part of your history. You had a mill, this is a mill town. That goes to where the workers were. They couldn't afford lavish. They were there to work and to make a living. You need to remember that. So if we're talking about carving out part of our history from that district, there's a possibility you're gonna lose it and then you're gonna lose that history. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can't rebuild it, you can't put it back. 
I just want to make sure everybody kind of keeps that in forefront. I also challenge that this necessarily isn't an ordinance issue or a zoning. It's possibly the definition of how we look at infill. I know that's partly where we are here, and that is confusing. And I do agree with Mr. Witham that it is very subjective because every block you walk, you have different factors that are weighing in. You're looking at a downtown, you're looking at a mill, you're gonna look at the railroad. There are different factors, and that's the reason it is very hard to define. But if our city wants to do that, I think we should have a workshop with our planning, zoning, HDC, put some work in and get that defined. Make it easier. Perfectly okay to do that. We also have the unique opportunity. We are a certified local government. We could get grants to also help bring in people to look at it from an outside perspective and go, is this worth still having in the district? Where should those lines be and have that outside opinion done? That's another avenue we can do. Just food for thought as these things come up, but I just wanna make sure that we're thinking about it in all perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. Any further closing comments by visitors? Any further closing comments by visitors? And being so, moves us to agenda item number 18, which is closing comments by council members. I'll start with Councillor Messier. Perfect. At large. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. A couple of things. Might as well beat this 85 Elm Street. I understand the historical district of the mill. I've lived in this community for 65 years. That parking lot that we're talking about on Elm Street was that, a parking lot and a stairway for the people to walk to GE. Oh, that's right, there's a lot of historical significance of GE Elkara. Are we gonna make Mr. Chimberg, if he follows through, put a brick facade on that? I tend to doubt it. Um, so that being said, and I understand the historical significance of the hill area. Tell me where the historical significance, other than the parking lot that I just referred to, where people parked in GE, as well as they parked on every street, because at that time, as a kid growing up, there was the bleachery, GE, the shoe shops, and that. Elm Street was what it, what it is. Where some people parked, McKay's had a store, Ray's Variety had a store, Turgeon's had a store, and the Rulos had a store where they were all. Those buildings there now are nothing more than apartments. I, I, so, 85, wh where do you get the idea, or where are they getting the idea that that apartment house has to look like a mill? There was never a mill building there. It was parking lots and houses. The Langelaire building at one point was maybe had some historical significance, but that building, because my landlord and his partner owned it and sold it, it has issues. It is an old building. Even the Boston Garden had to be torn down because you don't put $50 into a $5 watt. We can't keep everything. If we want this community to move forward and have people downtown, the only way you're gonna do it, because industry is not coming downtown because they can't get tractor trailers here because it's a distance to drive. They'll go out to one away. So that being said, the only way we can try to get people downtown is, and we all know, because they referred to a housing thing, that we need workforce housing and we need housing. You can't tell me that some of them houses on the intersection of Green Street and Franklin have any historical significance. They can't even pick up their trash, okay? So here we are, we have a developer that wants to build a building. And I don't care what anybody feels about him or them or whatever. They were gonna tear down Profile Garage in those buildings, fix the street, the other building on Elm Street, oh, and lo and behold, the hotel. Right now, they're all sitting collecting mice and rats. But we can't do that because we think we're going to revitalize buildings and make people come to downtown. I mean, it ain't, it's not, you guys can do what you want. I'm going to believe what I believe. I find this all foolishness. Build the buildings, and that's all we got to do. But you know what? We're going to end up in court. We'll probably lose and Mr. Stebbins will get what he wants. A couple of positive things. I went to the 
new fire station a couple weeks ago last week. As much as I was a detractor of that, it's a very nice building, well job, good job. They did a great job. So, and I let my brother know, so that was good. Went to coffee with cops last week. Granted, I got there late, but community policing and that, <clears throat> that's a wonderful thing. So, they do a good job. Fire does a good job. Um, so, I'll leave it as that. And whatever happened to finalizing the lease with the Oaks? At some point, can we, did we approve that? Has that been approved? Okay, thank you. <laughs> city, yeah, city manager, go ahead. Wasn't sure sometimes if I can respond, yeah. Um, we'll be going to uh, committee with that to try to get some sponsors okay. to move it forward. We're at that point now. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I know the hot topic is the 85 Elm. I caught the tail end of that meeting, and I could tell there was thoughtful discussion going on within there and thought-provoking concerns that were going on. Um, I possibly could lean toward maybe looking at where the historic district begins and ends, looking at the mill area and keeping that in the historic district. Because I also live up in that area, and as I walk around with Fenway and stuff, you know, yes, there's some old houses, but what's the historical value up there? Um, some of it, it's just an old house. Um, so I was torn with what happened at that meeting because um, I thought, geez, you know, here we go. We're going to make it difficult for developers to come in. They're not going to want to come here. They have this, 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 and this to follow. But then, you know, we have these committees in place to make those decisions to help guide those developers in the direction that we think they want to go in as far as the ordinances go. So to me, it's kind of a catch-22. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of it, but I am open to looking at a few changes going on to make things a little bit easier. Um, I don't want to turn people off to come to our city as we're trying to revitalize the downtown and get things going. So that's where I stand on that. And I will be very excited to see the new footbridges in Willem Pond and know that we'll all be safe out there walking and Fenway won't fall through. No. But thank you, everybody, for voting on that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. At large, Councillor. Councillor Girding. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'll get out of my get out of the way. The quick thing first, and then I'll talk about the HCC and you know 85 Elm and the hot topic of the night. Um, quick thing is excited to see that High Street and its sidewalk um, are going to get some uh, repavement and some uh, work done to it. I think that's a great. Uh, spot to uh, put a lot of our money. A lot of folks were really pleased. I heard from a number of people about the work we did on the sidewalk thanks to the TAP grant. Um, I think putting a little bit of effort into the street itself and the other sidewalk will go a long way as well. Um, and I also wanted to say that I am certainly in favor of cutting the uh, through the intersection and going around to West High down to Cemetery. I think that that has been a thorn in our side and I think the thorn in the side of many drivers <laughs> for a while. And I think if we are doing that, we might as well just go all the way and do it because I cannot wait for those potholes to be gone. Um, so definitely in support of that. Um, pivoting now to discussion about HGC. Um, I'm thinking a lot about this since the comments were made earlier tonight and just how to like frame my thoughts around it. Um, and like with most things, I tend to turn to just like my experience as an educator and how I think about my classroom uh, and teaching. Um, and I think like, you know, as an educator, if um, either a mistake is made by a student or if a lesson doesn't go the way you want it to go, um, oftentimes the first thing that you should do and that we're taught to do um, is to reflect on your own decisions as a teacher, as an educator, and what did you do, what did you scaffold, what did you provide, how did you teach it in a way that, uh, you know, the students should be able to access it. Did you 
implement um, and provide the correct modifications for those students or the accommodations that were needed to make them successful. And I feel like um, by just going in and doing an ordinance change to change the size of the HGC, to just to kind of tie this metaphor together, I don't think that that does any of what I would do in my own classroom. I think that that's kind of just a heavy-handed approach to just, you know, the slap of the wrist, the old ruler, if you will, um, to the HDC, and I don't think that that is how we as a body should operate. Uh, things we could do to provide those scaffoldings and to be able to make uh, maybe decisions like this in the future a little bit smoother would be um, some of the things we've heard tonight. Again, this discussion about infill I think was a point well taken. I'm glad it was brought up. Um, there are certainly uh, slightly subjective ordinance, uh, ordinances around how new buildings are brought into the HCC and how uh, the HCC decides uh, what those buildings should look like. Uh, it does kind of go to the board to say, you know, look at what's around, try to make your best decision, but perhaps uh, instead of just cutting the HCC down in size, maybe looking at how do we as a body want to regulate new buildings going into the HDC, and how can we make those ordinances and those rules a little bit more clear so that decisions in the future are better uh, made to benefit both the city, the historic uh, part of the city, and developers. Um, other areas worth scaffolding um, would be Looking at the catalog, again, thank you for bringing up the catalog and how to catalog this stuff. Currently, the HCC, I believe, uses a catalog from 2008, am I wrong about the survey? 2008, I'm seeing head nods. Um, that's a really old survey that we're basing our decisions on. So again, before <coughs> cutting the HCC down in size and making these choices about it for it, maybe we think about providing resources to the committee to be able to update their survey of the historic buildings to have more accurate information. And then we can see, are those buildings, you know, worth saving? What's the quality of the buildings in that district? And then maybe from that point forward, we can start thinking about how do we want to carve out certain pieces and say, yeah, this whole section of town, there's no value here. These are all buildings built in the 70s. Like we can say that for certain maybe doesn't need any preservation. Um, I just think more information is better than swift, uh, like quick, like knee-jerk reactions to just one single decision that this uh, board made. Um, those are the two things I, that came to mind just from tonight. I'll keep thinking on this. Um, I don't think I'll support a change in the size of the HCC as of right now. I would love to see this being discussed in a workshop format as opposed to just an ordinance coming forward. I understand the reason why it is, uh, because I think, as the councilor said, uh, hopes the discussion is spurred from that. I think it already has. Um, but I hope that we can discuss this even more. Um, and I, I certainly plan to, so thank you. Thank you, councilor. At large, councilor. Councilor Witham. Mission accomplished. I didn't think it would happen so quick. Uh, I think this is an excellent start to the conversation. Again, whether or not I support the ordinance that I'll ultimately introduce or not uh, remains to be seen, but the conversation's an important one. Um, I've talked with many people in the community. I, I struggle with the historic district myself personally. Um, part of it is, is that I'm a rather sort of black and white person, right? Uh, I umpire baseball. You are either safe or you are out. There's no tie goes to the runner. By the way, there's no such rule. That is a myth, right? Uh, a tie goes to the umpire. You are safe or you are out, right? Uh, so when it comes to things that are more subjective, I personally struggle with that. Uh, at the zoning board meeting last week, there was some conversation around uh, the building called Bradley Commons on Central Avenue in Dover uh, that a lot of people apparently don't like. Uh, I personally like that building, right? So there's that subjectivity. Uh, it was mentioned tonight, the, 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 the buildings being built in downtown Berwick. Uh, they don't displease me, but there are facets of those buildings that I don't like, right? So there's this subjectivity to this whole thing. 
going to 85 Elm Street, right? Uh, first of all, that building doesn't exist now, right? So it is an infill building, to use the term that I've learned here tonight. So uh, I look forward to learning more about that because what are we trying? I get that it will contribute to the historic neighborhood, I suppose, right? But we have examples up on the hill. Uh, I cited a couple last week at the ZBA meeting where I'm not sure we succeeded. So therein lies part of the rub. And the other is, if we are to not change the district size, I think we need to amend the, 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 the guidance that we provide for it because uh, there is often a struggle for people. And f the financial piece to this, the economic viability of it, needs to be part of HDC decisions. It just has to be. So because absent that, it, it, the, the historic district rules and guidelines, I believe, in some cases, serve as an impediment, right? So how, how do we get there, right? So amen, the conversation has started. Uh, maybe hot and heavy, but it's a good one, right? Uh, and I look forward to uh, being further engaged on that conversation. I'll leave it at that for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Moving to the ward side, Ward 1 Councillor, Councillor Pepin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to start off by I, I did attend the traffic safety meeting simply because I did get an email from some of the residents on, on Rocky Hill Road and on Otis Road about the, the walking uh, as Councilman Vincent says, I don't know who walks who. I don't know if the dog walks me or I walk the dog, but it's, it's either here or there. I, I, I do walk on Otis Road a lot. Otis Road is a very winding road. Anyone that walks that has to keep their head on a swivel because, no, and, and it's not just because the cars are going fast, is that there's not a clear shot because you're coming around a corner and as soon as you clear that corner, you've got another corner so the cars don't actually see you. I would say, over 90% of the people that travel that road do a very good job. They're very, very safe. It's the 10% that probably could kill you. Uh, that, that, that is a little scary at times. Uh, there are certain times of the day that the residents up there don't walk. Uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way, Christian Academy, between the two schools, it is like a highway sometimes between school beginning and school stopping and there was just so many cars. I counted 53 cars one day just walking one way that passed me because I <laughs> made the wrong timing. So uh, it is, uh, like I said, the majority of the people up there are residents. It is a very nice place to walk. The people are very nice. The residents are very nice. Sometimes you end up with a conversation. You go out for a half an hour walk and it takes you an hour and a half to come back home. Uh, and it's a pleasant walk. I mean, you've got a little bit of nature and a little bit of everything else. Um, we did, I, I am against the signing of, of putting pedestrian signs up. Um, they don't listen to the, to the speed limit sign lots of times. Uh, there are certain times they go past my house because that's about the only straight area there is and the traffic is, sometimes they're dragging late at night to abreast. Um, and if I call the police, they'd probably be in Rochester by the time I got 911 dialed in my phone. So um, that was kind of a useless thing. Police has been very good to say, well, if you could time it, you know, let us know and we'll try to set up and try to catch them. They don't come at the same time twice. So um, all I can say about that is, is that Rocky Hill Road and Otis Road for pedestrians, it is, it is a little touchy. I ask people that if they do travel that road to try to watch for pedestrians, it is very well traveled. When I moved up there, there was seven cars that used to go to work at early in the morning between 6, 6.30, and at uh, 4 o'clock they used to come back. There was, from, from Lily Pond Road down the end of Rocky Hill Road, there was no houses, it was dirt. So, I mean, it, that, that place has really developed in the past years. Everything around the pond has developed. And like I say, things change in life. I can't change it, but that's, it is. It is what it is. Uh, s second thing is the historical society. I am looking forward to some type of changes. Uh, especially in, in that area of town. Uh, I, it's, it's kind of funny because I've been reading a historical book of Summersworth and when the factories were built and, and everything else. So I, I do believe in trying to preserve our history. Uh, and I do think there, there's certain terms. I guess what really bothers me the most 
as I remember the city of Somerset before urban renewal, you couldn't, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you couldn't go down Main Street because people were getting out of the factories, people were walking out of the factories, GE was active at the time, uh, the shoe shops were going, uh, the mill houses that were all along Main Street, they looked just like the ones that's on the corner of, of Washington Street and Main Street and the old preservation part. As far as I'm concerned, those are the only two buildings left in town as historical. Um, you, Urban Renewal turned down the heart of this city, as a, which bothers me so much because it took so much out of our community. It took the people out of our cities. We do not have people in our cities to support the businesses that are in our cities. We used to have clothing stores. We used to have two drug stores, at least two, probably three drug stores. We used to have donut shops, two or three of them at, at, at and they used to be full at all time. There is no people to invest in the downtown area. As of when I was on the fire department, we did inspections on buildings in, uh, along High Street here and down on Market Street, and it was like rotating the next year that you go there, it was a different business because nobody walks into the town because there's nobody walking in town. We don't have the people anymore. How do we draw the people to, to actually support the businesses that we do have and, and, to drive, and to bring in new businesses? And the only way I know how to do that is through development. Do I believe that certain buildings on that side probably ought to be protected? I think they ought to be, has some type of historical factor to them and I think it ought to be brought out. I think some of the codes ought to be changed that we can introduce contractors that are coming in. And I guess what's very, very frustrating is me sitting up here as a councilman, which is, is part of my job or whatever, is that when we put out RFPs to try to draw stuff into town, it seems like no one wants it. And I guess that's what the most frustrating part that I find, is that whatever we've come up with a development, like Brenton's Clean is, like the police department that we've, we've pushed around, Hilltop School that we've, we've, we've argued about and stuff like that, everything that has came to us that we've had to try to deal with. And the Armory for another one. Uh, we, we try to introduce things that are gonna help our community and develop our country, uh, our community that fits into it, but it seems like it gets shot down from the public. Um, and, and it leaves us in a dilemma that no matter what we bring in front of, in front of the, the citizens of Summersworth, they just don't want any change in Summersworth. And maybe that's, that's, that's what I feel very, very defeated apart, that it doesn't seem like anybody wants any change. I am very concerned about if we ever start developing the mill area, that somehow along that's end up gonna be thrown aside simply because the developer isn't gonna wanna deal with us anymore. I don't think anybody wants to put on an RFP with us anymore because it gets everything gets shot down. It, it just seems to me that way, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's just my feeling. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, Councillor. Ward 2, Councillor. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to try to stay up here and maintain my composure. All I know is the people on this council Myself and this guy right here is the only person in this room, as far as counselors, has ever built a home or a business. So I get, take a offense to when you say, oh, we don't want to drive out people who come into the city because we don't make it too hard for them. It is hard. It's hard for everybody that comes into the city to build, from building the building to what they're going to put for for shrubs out in front of their building. So I take offense to people who think that we're going to drive out business. We're not driving these people out on Elm Street. They got so much money invested, they're not going to back out of this. They want to be here, so they will make the moves to do it. I've heard people come up here like Dave Franklin and say, oh my God, this city is so hard to work with for building. So please, spare me this. I guess it's a good thing to try to feel that way, but that's not what's happening. Because when you come to just about any city, they want things to be their way. So they've created ordinances and regulations to make things look good. Please, please don't do that to me. Because I've been through it. 
as a guy who built three homes in the city and a business, and it was certainly not easy. Now that I'm calm, I'd like to say that I think the decisions of the ZBA, considering they were overwhelming, was in support of the historic district. We here as councilors have that control. If you don't like that historic district, then abolish it. On a more positive note, I'm really, I'm really glad that the new sign has been put up to the entrance from Dover to Summersworth. It really looks outstanding. And as far as Mr. Brooks' comments, I can't agree more. We should start listening more to him sometimes. Thank you. Ward 3 Councilor, Councilor Gibson. I don't know, that's a pretty tough act to follow. Um, but I do agree with him. And by the way, I've run several businesses in the city. Um, a businessman is not going to kick out, out of Summersworth because there's a few rules in place that make it a little tough to work. Um, and on the flip side of that, I'm not too particularly impressed with the developers at 85 Elm Street. They came in, they presented one thing, and then the next thing you know, they're flipping it around and <laughs> speaking of preserving the character of the city, I know the old hotel is, is a disaster, but just what we need in the downtown, another parking lot, thank you very much. Um, so there's my peeve about them. The historic district is important to any committee. Yeah, sorry, community. Every town around here has some variation of it. You need to preserve the character of your community or you have no history. So if you don't agree with what they are doing, if you don't agree with what the zoning board is doing, then have the conversation and change things. Just stop bitching about it, everybody. Um, and I do agree with what Ms. Cameron said. The Millhouse are not pretty. They were functional. They always were. And if you're going to drop a building into an area that does have some significance in that sense, then that building should conform to the area. Not, oh my God, we're going to drive this guy out because we expect him. He, he knew what he was getting into when he came into the town. So tough on him. I'm sorry, I'm just TO'd about this whole 85 Elm Street deal. I'm tired of hearing about it. Um, now I'm losing track. <laughs> Anyways, um, I believe that a uh, realtor handling the armory is the best alternative. And we've seen from RFPs and I made my comments earlier about Chinberg. Um, whether he scares other people off or not, I don't know. But at least if it's on the open market, you should receive best value for your property. And again, it has to go through us, has to go through the boards. So let the process work. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Ward 4, Councilor. Councilor Austin. Thank you, Your Honor. I look forward to having more discussion about the historic district, its size, where it belongs in the city. I think that's an important conversation that we need to have. I agree that it certainly has its place. We need to preserve our history. We just need to determine where that is most appropriate. I think there's a clear distinction between existing properties and new properties. I think we need to uh, allow some latitude when a developer wants to come in and, and create new property 
um, to revitalize an existing area that's that's quite frankly an eyesore um, to the extent that there's restrictions in place that uh, obviously most developers can't meet that's a problem I think that uh, that we need to take a look at that I think we need to have the broader conversation as Councillor Witham has suggested I think that that's important um, I'm one of those councils that's been on the fence for a while about whether we even need a historic commission historic district commission I think we do I think we need to maintain that uh, entity in order to uh, help preserve that historic structure that Summersworth has um, but I'm I'm not necessarily an advocate of, of requiring a brand new building to look like a building that's been there 200 years I just don't think that that's necessarily the right approach to take and I think if we continue to go down that route we're going to have what we have I think we're going to have a downtown that uh, is inaccessible I think we're going to have empty business storefronts I think we're going to have parking spaces out here that aren't full I think that um, it's just not good for the downtown to continue to operate in the same manner we've been operating in and so I look forward to having that conversation thank you thank you councillor Ward 5 councillor councillor Michu thank you Anna I'm going to take a swing at it myself with, with the HDC and 85 Elm Street I just want to let the citizens of Summersworth to realize do not put all the blame on the HDC there's enough blame to go around with the developers because when they came in front of them it took them a long process to get to the point where they all agreed to the building they wanted they decided well we're going to put apartments underneath move the parking elsewhere and they changed the whole facade of the building what they should have did is go in front of the HDC and say okay we can't afford what we're doing with this design we want to work with you to come up with a new design to make it satisfactory but no they come in guns blazing says no we're gonna do this that and this is what we're gonna look like they did try to compromise with these people well maybe put some brick somewhere or change it a little bit but they were held steadfast no nope, it ain't gonna happen last week at the zoning board a few members of the zoning board also mentioned well, maybe if we put bricks on the bottom or do something a little different, that no, nope, they just looked at each other and just shook their head, no. So I can see why they're uh, frustrated. I'm frustrated because I really want to see this project done. But if we're going to decide to go with the um, looking at the size of the HDC area and all that, I'm fine with that. But also, if we're going to do something like that, I want to also make sure that we look at the rules and regulations that they have to go by. That sometimes they have a hard time, they have like a gray area, they have a hard time to interpret it. Maybe we should look at that and make it sure that it's not so gray and make it black and white so they can know their decision a lot easier for them to understand what, what's required from the city wants from them. And also, if we do something like that, I want to make sure if we form a committee and all that, I want to make sure the chairperson Laura Barry is involved with it because if she wants it because she'd be the perfect person for that because her knowledge on history and these buildings couldn't ask for a better person to guide us through this and this way here that she could they, tell us why a certain section is in there and why it's not or at least she can guide us in the right direction we'll have the final say but at least I would trust her opinion and um, mr. Brooks he made a comment about small housing at the armory when he said that, I thought about the time that uh, Councillor uh, Gurning invited me over, say about a month ago, up to Garnet. There's a company up there that's small housing, but they do 3D printed housing. And I fell in love in with them. And I told one of the manufacturers there, if you were developing something like that in the city of Summers, I would probably sell my house and buy that. And that's exactly what the spot we were thinking of was at the National Gum Armory. I hope in that they might be one of the bidders that might come forward and say, hey, yeah, that might be a good idea. Keep my fingers crossed. And let's see. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Mike Levinsky and his public work team down at uh, Public Works. Ash Street Park and the Butterfly Park down there is coming out really nice. Everybody should take a drive by, take a look at it. Um, also, I'd like to thank him and his staff for a continual effort through a uh, growing season down at the community gardens they did a great day time uh, supporting us there 
and also uh, Council Messier. I like the idea when you started talking about all the areas down by Green Street and Franklin, all the other buildings over there. there was it Turnage's Market, Ray's Supermarket, the former uh, St. Martin School, the opposite corner was a uh, beer joint at the time, and you talked about McKay's Market. At the time, it was not McKay's Market. It was Lambert's Variety, and I know that because that was my great uncle that owned that. <laughs> and the only thing I got left to say is, have a good evening. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cameron moves that the City Council stand in adjournment, seconded by Councillor Girding. The question before the Council is on adjournment. All those in favor, please state by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nope. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And the City Council stands in adjournment.